Hey, what's going on there? YouTube, this is CEO 0320, I'm JVS, so I'm back here again for another review for The Vampire Diaries 8th Season, 4th episode, An Eternity of Misery. If you do not remember the reference, I think it was uh, the first or second season when the revelation came up, why Damon was so bitter with Stefan, because of the fact that Stefan turned Damon, you know, even though Damon wanted to die. And so he has said to him when they got back to present day, I promise you an eternity of misery for what you've done to me. You know, and I was like, oh, snap. But the reference here, it plays in so much because you get to understand Sybil as, I guess, her background. I mean, I still don't like her. I think she is a terrible human being. Um, but considering how she is and if she's the good sister, oh, my gosh, like her. Her big sister, she's going to be a force to be reckoned with. And it sucks because who was the one that, Caroline, she preserved her life. Because she basically was dead, but that wouldn't have killed her anyway. You know, she, I mean, I, I don't know. I think that was really interesting that Caroline went, kept her alive, used her blood, and kind of find out now that she is the main bat. She is the main, this is spoiler alerts, I apologize, but this episode was just, all over the place because the thing that happened at the very end of the episode last episode you come to a revelation here in the midway of uh the reaction that i was doing for this episode which i'll post up later on today hopefully if i can get everything done i need to get done um damon went looking for a specific person dude was with blonde hair he set the dude's co-worker on fire man basically set himself on fire and then kind of was looking around for something and he found what he was looking for but in the midst of that like, I was looking at this guy, I was like, this guy, blonde hair, blue eyes, I was like, we never found out who Matt Donovan's dad was. We've seen his mom, we knew I had a Vicky, but we never saw the dad. And come to find out, sure enough, that was Matt's dad, and, and then Matt came to his rescue, thank God. But I was like, my whole thinking was, I find it ironic that Sybil would go and push Damon to go, you know, to look for this, and, um... I was like, man, she's just going to go and get him to kill Matt. And that's what I thought was going to happen. Come to find out, like, Matt was able to, you know, stay alive. Damon got away uh, and found what he was looking for. Uh, but I'm surprised he didn't kill Matt as well, which is really interesting. Instead, come to Revelation, and Matt finds the trunk that Damon was talking about, and it was Tyler then. I was just like, dang. That's some sad joint. If his dad wouldn't been there, man, I don't know what Matt would have done. And I, it's, 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 it's very sad. Uh, I don't know what's more sad though because considering what happened to Sybil and what her sister did to her and what happened to the guy, was it Cade? Um, I mean that's some sad stuff but the whole concept of like the afterlife and hell and the devil and Cade being that and it's a dumbed down version of the concept of Satan, hell, Lucifer and I mean, first off, I'm a Christian. I don't believe in any of this. I, I mean, part of the reaction, I was like, I rebuke you behind this, this mess, you know, and the, and the gesture behind it. Um, but from a concept of what happened to a person by the name of Catherine. Catherine Pierce, once she died, you know, everybody else was kind of going to the other side. Catherine did not. She got sucked up, pulled out, and dragged into the air, right? Y'all remember that, right? And the end of the episode, um, the older sister, she killed the freaking intern. And the intern had talked about concepts of hell and what happened to her even with that brand that was on her after the fact. And then she just killed her and she said to her, basically, like, I thought she didn't kill her because I saw her, like, looking. I was like, I thought the other side was destroyed. There should be no other side anymore. And then all of a sudden she got dragged just like Catherine and up. So now we're finding out anybody that was bad, all these people that they've been killing, they've all been being fed to this creature, man, or whatever, um, Cade. And so that's what happened, I guess, to this girl's soul, which is insane. Um, the concept, even more tempered, is the fact that um, Sybil is actually being controlled by somebody else and eternally just as this is what she's been doing since 75 bc 750 bc um i don't know i, I think that that <laughs> it's a bit more of a stretch they could have just i think in my personal opinion they could have kind of like 
left that open to interpretation instead of giving a finite like moment in time when this kind of was occurred. Um, I don't know. I, I think that was. And I think it kind of diminished the episode a little bit because I can, I mean, one, I'm upset with Damon. Like, I, from the concept that he's given himself over and left his humanity, um, we didn't get to see Enzo and Bonnie dealing with that situation. I wanted to see that a little bit. Um, I think the best parts were Stefan and Sybil. Sybil talking to Stefan because they had had a real conversation. And Sybil has yet to really... Um, manipulate Stefan's mind and I didn't understand that until this episode um, so I I don't know I don't know what's gonna become of Stefan with the whole end of this but I know for a fact he would sacrifice himself for his brother any day of the week now what was funny is that when he was trapped in that stone his whole purpose was to let his brother go and that's not something he can do so I don't know, but I feel like we're going to get uh, all the people that are getting sucked up into this situation, they're going to come back. And even with Sybil saying that, you know, Stefan could kill this person, I don't know how that's supposed to work. So, I don't know. It, it's a lot more questions in this. It, it left me kind of pondering. I don't think this episode was as good as the last three, but it, it brought up a lot of interesting nudges and questions and a lot of sad things. I mean, like, shoot, they killed the intern. Matt Donovan's, you know, best friend, Tyler Lockwood, is dead, you know, and Tyler, if I'm not mistaken, he only one knew where, um, Elena's body was, so, this is a bad situation, to say the least, um, but yeah, I, I give this episode an 8 out of 10, it wasn't perfect, it wasn't the best, but it was, it was pretty good, pretty decent, hope y'all enjoyed this review, keep it locked, JVS Wing will stop, y'all have a blessed one, peace.